So far, you've dealt mostly with horizontal and vertical lines. The Swift Loop tool has been quite handy in those situations. In the case of something curved, such as an archway, you'd need to use the Cut tool and do some additional work with mapping. This second building shown here has so far been modeled using the same techniques as the first building. You'll model the archway using the Cut tool in the front viewport. In Edge mode, use the Cut tool to go around the arch. Remember, the Cut tool's cursor changes as you hover over a vertex, an edge, or a face. Use that to your advantage to pinpoint the cut. Remember also that although this technique works well for facade modeling, it is not recommended for organic modeling. When you plan to subdivide or deform a mesh, you want to keep the quad poly integrity as much as possible. This is not the case here. Once the cuts are made, select the polygons that make the archway. Extrude the polygons inward to add depth. The same phenomenon of streaking pixels appears. The faces that make the archway steps are easy to fix and require planar mapping in the z-axis, much like you did with the first building. The interior faces of the archway are more of a problem, as they do not face a single x, y, or z direction. You could treat each face individually, or you can use the unwrapping sketch tool. Add an Unwrap UVW modifier to the top of the stack. Select the faces that make the archway steps. Set a planar Z-axis projection and go to the Edit UVs dialog. As you did with the first building, display the reference bitmap. Make it brighter if you wish and filter the selection. Use the Freeform tool to scale and position the selected faces to an area of the wall that also works well as a pavement. Next, select all the inner faces of the arch. Apply a cylindrical mapping and align it in Y. You can see the mapping gizmo surrounding the archway. As you flatten the mapping, you can decide where the seam is going to be. In this case, you want the seam at the bottom since the faces already intersect at the top. The seam is shown by a green edge. Rotate the gizmo 90 degrees so that the seam is at the bottom. You can use angle snap for precision. Use the Fit button to rearrange the gizmo. Exit cylindrical mode and adjust the mapping so that the selected faces sit slightly above the arch. If you select the right face in the Edit UVs dialog, you'll notice the left face is selected in the viewport. Mirror all the faces horizontally in the Edit UVs dialog to fix that problem. Switch to Vertex mode and select the Sketch Vertices tool in the Tools menu. Here, you will use the Freeform Align method. Also ensure that Interactive Mode is enabled. After you have set up the Sketch tool to use Freeform Drawing, you work in a two-step manner. First, drag to select the vertices you want to reposition. And second, draw a freehand stroke to place the selected vertices. Work on another set of vertices until you block out vertex positioning.
right click to exit sketch vertices mode. After that, you can fine tune your work by moving individual vertices to other locations. Work on other areas of the building like sides, window jams and sills. Save your file when you are done. Two more facade textures have been provided for you to practice these techniques. A completed file with four buildings has also been provided for your convenience. This concludes this project. We hope you have enjoyed it.